This is Tracy and welcome to our first video in 2022. I am so excited to be here because I'm going to share how I set up my dated Boho Life Planner, which is one of the dated planners available in our shop. So if you want to check them out, you can find our shop at the link below. Okay, first things first. To get started with digital planning, you'll need to download an annotation app. And a few options are available. One example of a free app is called Colonote. It's a relatively new but good app for digital planning. While for the paid apps, we have GoodNotes, NoteShelf, Notability, and the list goes on. I'll be using the GoodNotes app since it is popular among our customers. Now, let's look at my planner setup. So, the Boho Life Planner has a simple yet elegant terrazzo cover design that follows a page where you can write your name. The third page is the index page. Here you can see all the contents of the planner. This planner has monthly, weekly, and daily pages. These pages allow me to mix and match different management systems. Let's move to my yearly calendar. This section is where I'll put holidays, birthdays, upcoming events, and appointments. So whenever someone tells me something is happening in the future, I'll put it in here so I won't forget. Also, I love the color code, which helps me categorize the events into personal, school, shop, and etc. I found organizing my tasks into categories is helpful because I'll be able to assess at a glance if I'm managing my time efficiently. Now on my yearly overview page, I'll reserve this page mainly for my shop projects like product ideas, releases, promotion, and so on. This way, I can see my current and upcoming projects and tasks. And by doing this, I'll have an overview of my projects which will help me stay accountable and keep track of my small shop. And my favorite part of the planner, my vision board. This section has a visual representation of my goals for this year. When I created this, I started by listing my goals. And then I searched images on Pinterest for some ideas and inspiration. And if I found something that motivated me, I dragged it into my planner and made a collage. I put everything that inspires me to reach my goal here. It's fun, refreshing, and making me strive more to become a better version of myself this coming year. And that's it! That's how I created my vision board. For the goal planner section, I listed my ultimate goal for the year. It is related to my shop. And basically, I reflect on why I want it and list down the action steps to help me reach my goal. This section also has monthly mini goals, which I think is helpful, at least for me. I can easily copy and paste these goals on each month, and most importantly, I can have an overview of my monthly goals and assess if I am reaching them. Then the financial section. Nothing much now, but I'll summarize my monthly finances here. It's super convenient because each month is linked to their corresponding monthly pages. For my master to-do list, I'll be using this to jot down long-term projects, classes I want to attend, small things I want to accomplish during the year. Again, this is for an overview of the year because I'll be keeping a to-do list every month, which will be a more structured list of specific tasks I want to accomplish for a particular month. The quick notes section will be more of a brain dump section. So whatever pops up in my mind, whether it is ideas for my shop, errands to make, anything, I'll write it down here. And for the heart of the planner, the monthly page. The monthly view has a typical two-page spread including column notes for quick reminders for the month. Here, I refer back to my calendar page and copy relevant events of the month. This repetitive motion of copying things over from year to month, then month to week, really helps to stick it to my mind, so I don't forget. As you can see, I only plan minimally, and again, I color code. Most of the time, I drew my stickers in Procreate, I don't know, it calms me and makes my planning more fun and personal. Let's look at my monthly dashboard. 
My monthly dashboard gives me an overview of my month at a glance in a more detailed manner. Here, I can put main events, holidays, deadlines, and appointments. This section is like a brain dump section to me, but more reserved for the month. A monthly budget is also included each month. For the monthly self-check-in, I'll fill this up at the end of the month. Now, let's go to my weekly overview. I'll use this to plot important tasks and events per week and my most important to-dos. For a more structured planning, I'll use the weekly schedule. The weekly schedule spread will clearly define which time is spent for work, school, leisure, etc. Whenever I have meetings, events, appointments, or scheduled calls, this view is beneficial to see how much time I have left for my other remaining tasks. Usually, my weekly schedule is my go-to resource if I need to schedule something in my planner. I'll use the left side to write down tasks that don't have any specific day or time to be completed. I usually leave them in a nameless column or sometimes I'll assign a particular day or hour to have a bit of structured planning. I have already planned my morning and night routine, my exercise schedule, as well as my lunch and dinner. Again, this is just a visual aid to better understand my time for other tasks. This planner also has a weekly wellness spread as well as a blank spread for journaling and other stuff. For my case, the blank section will be assigned to my weekly meal plan since one of my goals this year is to eat healthy. And finally, the daily pages. I am actually a daily person simply because I usually have a bunch of household tasks and tasks related to my schoolwork and planner shop daily. So I like to see my notes and to-dos at a glance. I love to brainstorm at night, thinking about the possibilities and challenges that the next day would bring me. This is why I like this full blank left page. I can jot down notes and even write a journal for the day. For the 12 custom section, this planner offers 48 templates option. In my case, since I'll be teaching this year and I don't need a separate planner for that, I assigned one section in my custom tab to the school schedule. You can see how easily we can customize our own template inside our digital planner. Here's my other custom section. I reserved some to have room for other stuff in the future. So that's it. That's how I set up my planner for this year. I hope you learned something. And for those who already purchased our 2022 Life Planners, thank you very much. And see you in the following video.